Hello, I'm Gary Knight, founder of Knight International. Welcome to another episode of Nightlife. I'm here in Dubai today at the Dubai Autodrome. We're here for the Dubai GP Revival. This event gets bigger and bigger each year, some fabulous racing. But come and let's have a look at some of the historic race cars that are on show here. Follow me. No, it's a 1976. I think this was a Lotus at one stage, but uh, it's now run by uh, Wolf Williams. Yeah, yeah, so it's a Williams, an FW, FW05. FW means Frank Williams. Frank Williams sadly uh, passed away, and um, regrettably, um, his daughter sold the uh, company. Williams F1 to an American investment company. Um, I think they're doing quite well considering when you're up against these big budget guys, but these old F1 cars do look really cool. I love how the big fat tires at the back, but let's move on to the 007 Tyrrell. Okay, what people don't know is that the most used F1 engine ever in uh, Formula One is actually the uh, Cosworth V8. And this is what this car's running now. I think it's a DF Cosworth. I'm not too sure exactly the, uh, the model, but these V8s are amazing. They sound absolutely astonishing. But let's move on. So this brings us on to the Benetton. Um, you may know Benetton from uh, Michael Schumacher days. He won his first championship in the Benetton in, uh, nine, in two, 19... You'll tell me, when did Schumacher? 1993 and 1994. So yeah, so uh, we sold the 1994 uh, Schumacher Benetton oh, some, uh, some years ago. But this particular Benetton goes back further. This is, um, I'm just ha having to refer to the notes here. So uh, Stratton and uh, S Winner. But again, this will have another full DFV Cosworth engine. Again, a V8, as I say, the most, uh, the most used engine ever in F1. In fact, if you buy an historic F1 car, you are better to put a, a, a DF Cosworth, a V8, they're just not so much easier to uh, to manage and look after. You don't have to get the engine hot to put the oil in. You don't need lots of engineers. You can literally turn up as a driver, engineer, and take your car out on a historic race. Okay, let's move on. So this brings us on to Hesketh Racing. Hesketh is a uh, an English aristocrat. He, uh, he loved cars and decided one day, let's go into Formula One racing. And he picked up James Hunt. James Hunt was struggling in, uh, in uh, F2 racing, but uh, he joined Hesketh. And this is, uh, I think this is one of James, James's cars, I think. But uh, James Hunt is probably known that for his, for him being a playboy, for him, winning the 1976 World Championship, beating Nicky Lauda. Nicky Lauda had a horrific crash in, uh, at the Nürburgring. Uh, half his face was burnt off, you probably already know this. But he entered back, he got back in the race car, uh, I think in around six weeks. His lungs were all charred and burnt, and uh, he, he went out testing at, in, um, in, in Imola, I believe. Yeah, and uh, he didn't ask them to uh, t time his lap, but he ended up being quicker than his teammate. But when they got to Suzuka in Japan on the final race, it was absolutely torrential rain. And many, re many drivers retired, in including Nicky Lauda. And amazingly, to a big surprise of James Hunt, he actually won, not, uh, he won the World Championship. He couldn't actually believe it. There was a bit of a conspiracy 
uh, around James Hunt and uh, to prevent him winning the 1976 World Championship. But, uh, but he managed to do it and uh, the rest is history. But it all started with Heskiff Racing. They used to just turn up with crates of champagne and uh, James Hunt's badge on his race suit was breakfast, sex for breakfast. That was his slogan. So uh, yeah, a real womanizer. He actually, what you may not know, he was a big budgerigar collector. He used to collect these birds and he died of a heart attack at his home uh, in, in London. Uh, they just found him on the floor one day. But, um, but his son is making a big, uh, a big statement in racing. So, okay, let's move on. So here I am with, uh, I thought I had to look twice, I thought has James Hunt been re-resurrected? <laughs> re but you really look like James, so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So where are you from, Australia? No. Where? I'm actually New York. New York, oh I see, okay, I saw a twin of an accent, so uh, yeah. You so, pick it up here in the yeah, yeah, that's very, very true. I was just reporting about James Hunt on one of the uh, on one of the other cars there on the, on one of the Heskiffs, the 007 car. But but this is uh, fabulous. So what are you doing here? I'm, I'm being James Hunt. You're just being James Hunt, and you're. And I'm trying your... to bring the, the nostalgia, the life of that that time period back to life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how, this how is when memorable. these were back in the day when uh, the uh, when. Um, yeah, when motor racing was uh, dangerous and, and, and sex wasn't, and now it's the other way around. <laughs> Nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, of course. Okay, well, thank you so much You're for talking well. to me, and uh, I love the memorabilia. So I'm just going to pull Bridget Bardot away from Mr. Hunt over there. Yeah. And you're looking absolutely fabulous today in your uh, in your 70s outfit. And your... Thank you, you are delight delightful yourself. So uh, where are you from? What's your real name and where are you from? We don't call real names here, honey. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I've never met a girl with a real name. But, uh, but okay, so, we're, so it's Bridget. And where are you from? I'm from Russia. From Russia? Okay. Yeah, well, from the uh, best part of Russia, which is St. Petersburg. So, do you know, I've been to Moscow mm. and I was going to, uh, I was going to get the train from Moscow, to, but it's so far away to St. Petersburg. Everything is far away in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about 15th of the world's land mass is Russian. But I did want to go to St. Petersburg because it is beautiful. But, uh, but I remember going into the, uh, into the shopping mall in Moscow. Have you been to Moscow? Of course. Wait. And shopping mall for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, the only place where I've been to Moscow. <laughs> but Bridget, let me tell you that walking through the uh, the shopping mall in Moscow is just like going to a fashion show, seeing beautiful six foot blonde supermodels walking right. along with their Chanel bag, their Christian Louboutin shoes. Looking for there is a lot of beautiful women and not very good looking men, so you must be very popular there. I was so popular, right. honestly. I had to buy a, <laughs> I had to buy a stick. <laughs> but thank you so much. You thank look you. fabulous and thank you for letting me chat to you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, well we can't come to a GP event without talking about Ferrari F1. And this particular car, the driver was there, uh, Alain Prost, uh, four times world champion, I believe. Um, this car, I think 90, uh, 94, 87 to 94. I believe this car uh, is owned by a, a, a Swiss guy in Switzerland. Um, we, we had one of Alain Prost's cars for sale. We've actually got today another famous uh, Ferrari F1 for sale. Oh. We've got a 1992 Jean Alesi, race ready. So if you want to know some more information about our Alesi car, also running uh, number 27, please get in touch. I'll put our comments in the uh, below.
You may recognise this car. This is one of the cars that we use when we run our own uh, F1 um, experience team. We went to, uh, we took this car to uh, Le Touquet in the north of France. Uh, fabulous car, another Cosworth V8. Leighton House. If you're going to get into F1 racing, you want to do some historic events like here, like Goodwood, or even the Eurobus. Leighton House F1, not only are they reliable, but these are uh, usually the, the best value for, for money. Again, another uh, Cotsworth engine in there. For the uh, for their their parade lap, so we go and join them on the start on the starting line in a moment. But I think we got some. Uh, I think that's it for the moment. Okay, well it's not just historic F1 cars here at the uh, Revival in Dubai. We found this fabulous 2014 uh, Ligier. It's, uh, it's owned by a friend of mine, United Auto Sports, uh, Zach Brown. Well, it's not owned by him no more, but it was originally uh, run by, uh, by his company. Zach Brown is the uh, CEO of uh, McLaren F1, as you probably know. But this is a fabulous car. It's 2014, but just look at it. I could, it could be 2020. The aerodynamics, I mean, of course there are changes made to current cars in 2023, but just look at the aero design of it. And can you just imagine being in that car? And you've got to understand that FIA rules, you've got to get out of this thing within 10 seconds should there be a fire but have a look at this thing so this is French owned the noise in the background is uh, GP F F1 cars they're behind a uh, they're behind a uh, behind a safety car at the moment but just look at the aero wouldn't you just love to be able to take that out on a track and just feel the power Amazing. Okay, well, we can't leave this show here without having a look at the uh, Chrysler Viper. There's two Vipers here today, but just have a look at this car. Chrysler Viper, I mean, uh, eight, eight litre naturally aspirated car, very manual transmission, very, very heavy clutch, very difficult to drive. A friend of mine, a friend of mine, Mazin from FOS, he uh, restores and builds and modified cars. He's done some of my own, including a... Uh, for
so you were a bit unlucky yesterday in race one, but uh, we saw, according to your lap times in qualifying and uh, the way you recovered yesterday, that you were uh, really determined. But, and today you, you're on the podium, so how can you analyse this race? Uh, it was a great race. Um, it was quite an exciting first corner, which I managed to make the best of. And I sort of knew the guys had probably hunt me down, so I just did the best I could. And um, they've got the straight line. And going into the first corner, I could have. When they overtook me, I think I could have stayed on the inside, but it, I think it was just going to be a mess, and they were going to get me. So I, my main hope was that it'd slow each other down, but unfortunately it didn't slow each other down enough. And then the car was much better than the race yesterday, but uh, we're still losing the tyres. Um, I think it, uh, it's, 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 it's the car. The car's a fabulous car, but it doesn't have ground effect. The heat? I, I think it's the heat and probably the driver overdriving. And how about the dust? Sometimes when you look at the TV, you know, we see uh, some sand maybe coming from the tyres. Yeah, it's, it's a dusty old track, but I mean, it's the same for everybody. And um, maybe, again, that's one of the things that uh, makes a big difference on the characteristics of the car. Well, I didn't exactly win a race, but I'm with some beautiful ladies, so I come up a very good third position. Thank you so much. Second position, so he changed his Rothman cap to a rebellion cap. Stuart Hall. And our winner today, this is Michael Cantillon and Matt Martin. You have glasses, Martin, but your neighbours don't have one. A pair of uh, proper glasses, I mean personal glasses, uh, ribs of dry, uh, personal glasses, sorry. So, you're going to be equipped now. You receive the right equipment from our partner. Personal glasses, of course, for Stuart and for the winner's eyes. And the trophy for the for the winner of the second Formula One 17. This trophy will come to Michael Cantillon. And this trophy is presented by Alex, the founder of Evolution. Thank you very much, Alex, for joining us here. And presenting the trophy for the winner. The second place trophy presented by James Max Sweeney for cars. Thanks to James. We got plenty of cars this weekend at Dubai Autodrome. Thanks, James, presenting this trophy for the second place finisher, Stuart Hall. Congratulations, Stuart. And the third place trophy will be awarded by Mark Fashi, the founder of King Caviar. My favorite. Congratulations and thank you, Mark, for joining us for this podium ceremony and awarding a well-deserved third place trophy for Martin Stratton. Hold your trophies, drivers. As you are proud and we are proud for you. We're proud of you. Look at this three very talented drivers. That's so good. So now, this is going to be the champagne explosion. Please proceed. Oh, that's fantastic. So, if you are wet enough now, you're going to receive the very special edition of a Rebellion Time piece called 21. You so wanted that watch, didn't you? Oh, badly. <laughs> I see, I see, and uh, it was magnificent to see a well deserved win. So, uh, oh, thank you so yeah, much. Congratulations was, once it again. A, it was amazing, amazing yeah. out there. Yeah, good. Such good, clean F1 racing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was fabulous. I couldn't. 
I mean, we was only in one position, but we uh, you, there was the the first bend. That was that the first bend that you. Yeah, uh, the first bend. Yeah, we that was your, five cars yeah, going you, into the corner. Yeah, you just done them. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so how was the rose water? Uh, nice. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll have champagne tonight. Yeah, good. Well, you have a great evening. Well Thank deserved. You. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Congratulations! That was a great, uh, a great race there, especially uh, on that first corner. Is this your family? Yes, yeah, my little one. Wow! And my wife, yeah. Can I just say hello? Were you very proud of your papa today? Yeah. Yeah, he's very, very good, wasn't he? Yeah. And is this trophy going in your room or your father's room? In his man cave. Yeah, I don't blame. Him. <laughs> but a fabulous race. Thanks again, and it was a pleasure having a walk around talking about no worries, your car earlier. Thank you. Well, I can't leave the show without talking a little bit about this Dodge Viper. Dodge Vipers are, uh, are an amazing car, but uh, if you've never driven one and you have a picture on your poster, please don't bother to drive one because it will shatter your illusions. These poster cars of your favorite car, especially when I was young, like the Lamborghini Contash, until you drive one and realize how difficult they are. This is a V10 8 litre naturally aspirated engine. Come and have a look. You see here, this is a V10 8 litre. This is about 8.2 litre actually, but 8 litre. And the clutch on this car, you really need to have legs like Mike Tyson. It is really solid. It's a tough car. A friend of mine has a road going version of this car. Um, his name's Mazan, uh, Mazan, and he's the uh, director owner of a company called FOS here in Dubai. He uh, rebuilds, modifies cars. He's modified my Brabus 800, my Ferrari, and uh, yeah, I'll put a link to him below. But he has one of these for sale now. But um, you might have seen it in a petrol station, in a gas station, because these things go fuel when you fill up with fuel, you have to check underneath because you think that all the fuels just come out of the car. I've never known a car to drink as much gas, as much fuel as one of these, but fabulous looking car in red. Well, it's about a wrap here at the uh, Revival here in Dubai, but I had to close with the, uh, the Alain Prost F1. Um, as you know, we spoke earlier that we do have uh, Jean and Lacey's 92 car for sale. Um, it's a perfect car. These cars are perfect for the F1 Caliente. You may have heard of Ferrari Corsa Caliente, but Ferrari also do a special F1 Caliente, where Ferrari take care of the F1 cars, and you can then choose which race you go, anything from six to 12 races around the world. But, um, but if you want more information about the F1 Caliente or you want to know more about the Eugenia Lacey car, then please drop us a line. But for now, it's a goodbye here from Dubai and I'll catch up with you next time.